Hello viewers, welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that talks about breeding of terrorism and its impact on South Asian nations. Let's begin with the headlines first. Park-backed Hoji terrorist gets death sentence in Varanasi bomb blast case. Al-Qaeda is threatening suicide attacks in India. And violations of human rights in Taliban-led Afghanistan are growing. Park-backed Hoji terrorist and mastermind of the 2006 Varanasi serial bomb blasts, Waleullah Khan has been sentenced to death by a district and sessions court in India on June 6. The verdict came after over 16 years of the blasts, in which at least 28 people were killed and nearly 100 people were injured. Waleullah Khan was found guilty in two separate trials that were connected to a series of bombings and an attempt to murder. We have a report. 16 years ago, on 7th March 2006, India's holy city Varanasi witnessed a series of deadly bombings. The first blast took place at 6.20 pm at the crowded Sankat Mochan Hanuman Temple near the Banaras Hindu University. After 15 minutes, another blast followed at the Varanasi Cantonment Railway Station. A bomb exploded outside the waiting area next to the travel office. 28 people died and several were injured in the blast. Waleullah Khan, a terrorist from the Harkat-e-Ul-Jihad al-Islami group, was the mastermind behind the deadly bombings. He was taken into custody one month after the attack. Finally, after 16 years of the blast, a district and sessions court in India has awarded Khan death sentence. The court also sentenced him to life imprisonment on an attempt to murder charge and ordered him to pay fines. न्याय मिला वैसे तो देर से न्याय मिलना कोई न्याय की परिभाषा में आता नहीं है लेकिन भारतीय न्याय व्यवस्था इतनी बढ़िया है कि कम से कम जैसे एक पक्ष हम पीड़ित पक्ष हैं उसी तरह दूसरा पक्ष आरोपी पक्ष है तो उसको भी 16 साल का लंबी अवधि का बचाव करने का मौका मिला लेकिन आज जब न्याय व्यवस्था ने छीर नीर करके उसको सजा सुनाई तो मन को बड़ा सकून मिला। In April 2006, the special task force which was investigating the blast had claimed that the terrorist belonging to the Harkat-e-Ul-Jihad al-Islami group, also known as Huji, executed the Varanasi blasts in collaboration with the Jaish-e-Mohammed terror outfit. This jihadi organization has affiliation with Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. Not only that, this terror group has expanded its presence in Bangladesh with direct assistance from the Pakistani agency, the ISI. Many globally recognized terror groups are enjoying state patronage in the South Asian country. Dreaded terrorists including Jaish Chief Masood Azhar, Lashkar Taiba founder Hafiz Saeed are roaming freely across Pakistan while addressing incendiary speeches targeting India with impunity. This is the treatment global terrorists gets in Pakistan, that too in the public eye. Though Pakistan has always denied providing safe haven to any terrorist group, the Inter-Service Intelligence Agency is aiding these organizations to spread terror in India. Apart from the 2006 Varanasi bombings and the 2008 Mumbai terror attack, there have been many such attacks in India where the Pakistani agency, the ISI, has played a major role, including the 2006 Mumbai train bombings, the 2001 Indian parliament attack and the 2007 Hyderabad bombings. Pakistan has always kept denying that it is training, recruiting, and sending these terrorists across the border into Indian territory of Kashmir to create mayhem. But facts are otherwise. And it is now known by all the countries in the world that Pakistan is the mother of terrorism. Pakistan ISI is the one which is recruiting, which is training, setting up the training camps and then facilitating the infiltration into India. And also keeping a direct contact with all those terrorists and the underground overground workers in India and asking them to do what it wants. 
For decades, Pakistan has been promoting terror activities against India and other countries. Pakistani establishment and intelligence agencies have played a major role in terrorist attacks in different parts of the world. According to the Congressional Research Service report, numerous armed and non-state terror groups have existed in Pakistan since the 1980s. And when it comes to taking action, the report says that the Pakistani authorities didn't take sufficient steps to stop terrorist groups and individuals from openly operating in the country. There is an urgent need that people of Pakistan, its politicians and the army to stand on the same side in the fight against terrorism and set clear priorities. A change in policy and comprehensive consensus on terrorism have come as a prerequisite for the future and survival of the country. A diametrical change in approach can only prove to be beneficial to the people of Pakistan, the actual stakeholders of this country. Let's now move to India's Jammu and Kashmir, where the Indian security forces have launched a series of counter-terrorism operations to demolish the cobweb of Pakistan-aided terrorism. Islamabad is trying hard to whip up havoc and violence through continuous terror attacks and infiltration bits in the region. However, the alert Indian security forces are eliminating these terrorists with a commitment to maintaining peace and tranquility in the region. A report. There have been continuous attempts by neighboring Pakistan and its proxies to disrupt peace in the Jammu and Kashmir region. The country is providing training and funding to terrorists to infiltrate into Jammu and Kashmir and carry out attacks on security forces and civilians. Not only that, the South Asian country has been adopting and adapting terror tactics from other theaters like drones to drop weapons online terror recruitment and introducing IEDs in Kashmir. However, the malicious attempts by Pakistan get a setback by alert Indian security forces who time and again keep foiling infiltrations bids and eliminating terrorists in Jammu and Kashmir. In the latest on June 7, Jammu and Kashmir police apprehended four park back terrorists in connection with an improvised explosive devices attack that took place in the Shopian district last week, in which an army soldier Naik Praveen was killed and two others were injured. Pakistan <laughs> Park back terrorists in the valley are not only attacking security personnel but also targeting innocent civilians in the region. India's Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir has seen a sudden wave of targeted killings in Kashmir in recent months. This year, Kashmir witnessed at least 16 targeted killings, creating fears in the minds of people. In a view of the spike in targeted killings in Kashmir, Indian armed forces have lately intensified their efforts to decimate terrorism from the valley. Within 24 hours, security forces eliminated four terrorists including three from the lashkar e taiba in separate encounters in the valley, foiling all devious agendas of Pakistan. Among the four, two were from Lahore and the other two terrorists, one was killed in Shopian, while the other was neutralized in North Kashmir's Supor area. SSP Shopur got information that there is a lot of forest movement in उसके बाद पुलिस आर्मी मिलके एरिया में कॉर्डन डाला जब सर्च शुरू हुई इनकाउंटर शुरू हो गया जिसमें एक पाकिस्तानी टेररिस्ट मारा गया जिसके डॉक्यूमेंट से उसका नाम हंजला पाया जाता है ये लाहौर का रहने वाला है उसके पास एक के फोर्टिसन पांच मैगजीन मिला है काफी हथियार और वहां से दो पाकिस्तान 
Meanwhile, in the Indian state of Karnataka, a Hezbul Mujahideen terrorist, Talib Hussain, was arrested from Bangalore in a joint operation by Jammu and Kashmir Police and Indian Army's Rastriya Rifles on June 3. Though there has been a spike in Pakistan-backed terror attacks in the valley, the Indian security forces have always managed to foil all the devious agendas of Islamabad. According to recent data produced by the Ministry of Home Affairs, a declining trend in terrorist incidents has been seen in Jammu and Kashmir, with a figure showing a downfall of almost 50% in the cases from 417 in 2018 to 229 in 2021. This is the reason behind the disappointment of the Pakistan establishment and Pak-sponsored terrorists in the valley. The brutal killings of innocent civilians and security personnel in Kashmir reflect the frustration among the terrorists and their mentors across the border. However, such barbaric terror acts will not succeed in undermining Jammu and Kashmir's development journey as people in Kashmir will not let this conspiracy succeed. Founded in 1988 by Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda is believed to have first turned its eye on India in 1996 when it threatened to expand its violent mission to Jammu and Kashmir. The Salafist outfit believes that the non-Muslim countries are at war with Islam and it wants to set up the system of Sharia law in the world. The group has claimed responsibility for several attacks in Indian subcontinent. Recently, Al-Qaeda threatened to carry out suicide attacks in different parts of India. A report. In a threat letter dated June 6, terror group Al-Qaeda said it would launch suicide attacks in Delhi, Mumbai, Uttar Pradesh and Gujarat. All the Indian states have been apprised by intelligence agencies about the bombing's threat and have been asked to be on high alert. The threat letter was published on the official Al-Qaeda website and it was also tweeted by a member of terrorist organization on Twitter. Though Al-Qaeda has threatened India earlier also, this is the first time that the dreaded terrorist group has taken the names of specific target cities. Uh, these organizations have been threatening India for a very, very long time. It is not something which is new that they, 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 they're trying to do. They have been trying to create disturbances in India on communal lines for many years now. So this latest incident is really, uh, I don't see anything new in that statement coming up. There was a rise of Al-Qaeda in the Afghan Park region after the Taliban virtually chased out the American troops on August 15, 2021. Intelligence inputs indicate that Al-Qaeda chief Ayman al-Jawahari is based in Afghanistan though the ruling Taliban denies it and has conveyed to India that the global terrorist has taken shelter in neighbouring Iran. According to national security planners, the Al-Qaeda statement against India seemed to have been orchestrated by the Pakistani deep state with the sole objective of making New Delhi target of Islamists. Analysis of social media in the past few dates indicates that the agenda against India is driven from Pakistan with the use of unverified Twitter accounts and bots. Al-Qaeda is just a front for Pakistani deep state, practicing dark arts and spreading radicalization in the entire subcontinent. Along with issuing the warning of the suicide attacks, Al-Qaeda also announced to the Muslims of India that Ghazwa e Hind would happen and Muslims would win it. Ghazwa refers to war in Islam and Hind means Hindustan, that is India. So the term applies war against India. Many Islamic fundamentalist forces believe that Islam will spread all over the world only when there is Ghazwa e Hind. That is, the day when all Hindus will be eliminated from India and India will become an Islamic nation. Talks about Ghazwa e Hind, the conquest of India. All right? All right? So, I don't think we are such ninnies that we will stand down and let India be conquered again. All right? We will give it back. And terrorism, no cause, no cause in the world justifies the use of terror. And that is what the United Nations has said. 
Al-Qaeda had orchestrated the 9-11 attacks, the deadliest ever terrorist attack on American soil that killed over 3,000 people. There is no way at all that the threat can be dismissed. The organization may not have Osama bin Laden to lead them anymore, but it is still as deadly as it was 30 years ago, around the time of its formation. Intelligence agencies will now have to use all their assets, both internal and external, to keep abreast of the threat. Last year, the conflict in Afghanistan took a dramatic turn with the withdrawal of international troops, the collapse of the government and the takeover of the country by the Taliban forces. Since then, common Afghans have lost their fundamental rights. Recently, Taliban arrested an Afghan model along with three other people for allegedly disrespecting Islam and the Quran. Take a look. Ajmal Hakiki is a well-known model in Afghanistan who is known for his fashion shows, modeling events and YouTube videos. But recently, he was appeared handcuffed in a light brown jail uniform in the videos released by the Taliban. The de facto rulers of the war-torn country have arrested Ajmal for allegedly insulting Islam and Quran. The model was apparently forced to confess to having the intention to encourage others towards anti-Islamic acts. As per reports in a video clip, Ajmal was seen laughing as his colleague Gulam Sakhi, who is known to have a speech impediment that he uses for humor, recited the verses of the Quran in Arabic in a comical tone. After learning about the video that was posted on social media, Taliban arrested Ajmal Hakiki and his colleagues. By detaining Hakiki and his colleagues and coercing them into apologizing, the Taliban have undertaken a blatant attack on the right to freedom of expression. It is important that the international community should gear up, should look at Afghanistan so that it doesn't go into the morass that it has come out of <clears throat> or become much worse than what we have already seen. And it's important, it will be the responsibility of the international community, which has brought the world and Afghanistan and Afghan people to this stage. And so that's the most important thing. I would say the stability, support, humanitarian otherwise, India is doing its bit, whatever it can, but then other countries need to do that so that the regime does not decelerate into uh, something much worse. In life. The list of the Taliban violations of the human rights in Afghanistan is long and growing. Since the Taliban's takeover of Afghanistan in August, a grave human rights crisis has been unfolding. Last month, Afghanistan's Taliban rulers ordered all the female presenters on TV channels to cover their faces on air. The statement called the order final and non-negotiable. Several female anchors and presenters had then posted their photos on social media, showing them with their faces covered with face masks during presenting programs. Prior to this, the Taliban had implemented a gender segregation plan in the western Herat province, where men and women are not allowed to sit together in restaurants, even if their husband and wife. Many foreign governments have spoken out against the abuses, but it's not enough. These actions don't make the Taliban hurt. It's time for governments to turn consensus that the Taliban's actions are unlawful into coordinated actions that show the Taliban that the world is ready to defend the rights of Afghans. German Foreign Minister Annalena Baerbock has called for the international community to send Afghanistan's Taliban leadership the message that it is heading in the wrong direction. We see, in my point of view, that the Taliban are heading towards the wrong direction. And therefore, it is also crucial that economic supports need to be conditionalized with regard to the basic rights of the people. But this is also part of foreign policy, we have to be very honest. Our influence on what happens inside Afghanistan is very limited. It depends on the Taliban making rational choices in their own economic interest. 
and that is not what they are doing right now and therefore we are supporting the people of Afghanistan with humanitarian relief and uh, bringing out those who are endangered by the life. Common Afghans are watching their rights vanish before their eyes. They need more from the world than concern. They need action. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Shivangi Mishra signing off on the behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care.